Fuel TV, Action Sports Television. There's something about you, baby. Something about you, baby. I can't get enough. There's something about you, baby. I got you looking at me. I'm gonna call you bluff. There's something about you. There's something about you. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. It takes a man to be a dad. You're watching FSN Midwest, where Rams fans come first. Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week, 10-3 here, Kansas State. Later today, our quadruple header continues. Arizona takes on the top-rated team in the country, the USC Trojans. And then A&M will go to Colorado to meet the Buffs. Joel Myers, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox with you on that one, followed by Oregon visiting 20th ranked Arizona State. Coverage begins after our game only on FSN. KU gets great field position after their long punt. And it's first to 10. And Clark Green carries it to the 42-yard line. New quarterback in here as Marcus Herford becomes the third quarterback. That a and Colorado game tonight ought to be a dandy, though. Reggie McNeil and AM coming in off the overtime win over Baylor. Colorado shut out Oklahoma State last week. Hugh Charles a big day. Hugh Charles come on the scene for Colorado. Did a good job. And Reggie McNeil, he can take over any football game with his legs or his arm. The third quarterback for the Jayhawks. Herford throws it here. Gordon right back to Herford at the 40, at the 30. Breaks the tackle inside the 20-yard line. And KU coming up a little razzle-dazzle. Well, you see Charles Gordon on the football field on the offensive side of the ball. You figure, hey, he's going to get the ball thrown to him. So the Kansas State defense, they all converge on him. Well, Mark Mangina says, hey, I'm going to one-up you on this one because we're going to take Charles Gordon, let him toss it back to our quarterback slash receiver, have him run down the field. Herford, a wide receiver, also a quarterback for this football team, coming in and making a big play. Herford out of DeSoto, Texas, Cedar Hill High School in the Dallas area, 23 yards on the pickup, and now Barman comes back in to call the shots. So KU utilizing Herford and Gordon to get him in scoring position, and now Blake Seiler making the tackle on this play like the call by Mark Mangina. I really do. I like the aggressiveness. I like the idea of using your players to their strengths. And you try, you played young man Herford last week in a football game. Not unusual for K-State to think that he's going to play some quarterback in this game. But then you throw the extra wrinkle with Gordon throwing the football back to him. Nice play. Second and eight at the 17. Gordon in motion. Cornish. Fighting for every yard, gets to the 15-yard line. Yeah, and you'd also know when Gordon comes in, K-State's going alert, alert. Sure. They aren't bringing him in as a decoy. They're going to give him the football. No doubt that they're going to get the ball in his hands if possible. And, you know, the, the K-State defense has to say, oh, we're going to do that. But now you take this situation here. They're down inside the 20-yard line. They've got to put the points on the board here. Down seven, you know. I don't know how many opportunities they're going to have to get down into K-State territory like this. You need to think touchdown in this situation. Yeah, and then you have to get three. But at this point, third down and six. Obviously a big call at the 15-yard line. And a timeout by Kansas. We'll take a brief break as well. Stay with us. K-State hanging on to a 10-3 lead. We'll be right back. Star premium denim jeans. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Finally, affordable LASIK. Imagine life with reduced dependence on glasses and contact lenses. It's possible with the LASIK Vision Institute. Our centers offer some of the latest FDA approved lasers and diagnostic technology, including custom technology to improve your vision. All of this at an unbeatable price. Our independent surgeons have performed over 500,000 procedures. Call now for a free information session with a LASIK counselor. Our LASIK procedures are as low as $2.99 per eye. 
Plus, if you call right now, you can receive interest-free financing. That's right, 0% financing for up to one year. LASIK from $299 per eye plus 0% financing. Call 1-800-620-7560 now to act on this incredible offer. That number again is 1-800-620-7560. 1-800-620-7560. The LASIK Vision Institute. Experience, commitment, technology, and affordability. Dr. Pepper, Big 12 Game of the Week on FSN is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. One taste and you'll get it. By Sonic, it's not just good, it's Sonic good. And by Johnsonville Brats, welcome to Heaven on a Bond. Welcome to Johnsonville. Big play for KU. Third and six, the ball on the 15-yard line of Kansas State. We have 10.06 to go in the fourth quarter, and Kansas is trailing by seven. Murph Jr. in motion, cuts across the middle. The quarterback, Byron, fumbles the football. Wildcats recover at the 14. It is Garvin coming up with a fumble recovery. Or Moran, I beg your pardon. Alfonso Moran with a recovery. I think Moran actually causes the fumble and gets on it as well. I think he's the one who's right at the line of scrimmage. Who gets to Adam Barman, who's coming through the line, the line here. And this is a pretty good job here of coming up and recognizing it. This is our Whataburger Water play. Oh, we got a cause fumble on the outside, and then Alfonso gets on it. Huge play here because Kansas has an opportunity to tie this football game, but are coming away with no points. Garvin punched it loose, I believe, and then recovered by Alfonso Moran. And now K-State gets it back, first and 10 from its own 14-yard line. Wow, what a costly turnover that could be for Kansas. Everett taking a beating and a flag is thrown and at the 16-yard line, Floodman makes the tackle. You know, we're talking about KU figuring they got to get seven, and then they don't even get three out of there. They're in big trouble. Yeah, that's exactly right. You need to get points on the board, and you know, it's getting under 10 minutes here in this ball game, and sorting out like a face mask penalty going to go against Kansas. Great opportunity to score and, you know, just give the ball away. You just can't do that in a situation like this. Five-yard face mask on the defense. Penalties five yards from the end of the run and repeat first down. And now Kansas State, although they have shown little ability to do it today, 35 rushes, Gary, for 29 yards. This is the time Bill Snyder likes to be able to say, all right, let's run the ball down their throat, go in a long drive, get a score, and lock this one up. That's what you'd like to do, be able to take some clock off, don't give the ball back to Kansas with an opportunity to move the ball, chew up some clock, use your running game. Got a... The big back's in the game now. You've got Mann as the fullback. Another flag as Figures and Nelson had just broken out to the top of the screen for the wideouts. Greg Walker decided to start real early. A false start by number 67 of the offense. The penalty is five yards, and it's still first down. He didn't think that was fair. He just wanted to trade back the five yards, you know. <laughs> He's right. I know they're our rival, but what the heck here? <laughs> it's a seven-point game. we got a good audience watching this, wondering what's going to happen. So let's go ahead and even it up a little bit. Well, I don't know if that'll go real well with the head coach. Wow. Nothing doing on the ground against that Kansas defense. Seems like they're playing with more men sometimes at the line of scrimmage than, uh, than K-State is. Just take a look at the top of your screen, and you're going to see what happens here. He just runs unblocked into the backfield, and it's just going to right here, bingo. And Allen and yep. Keith make the tackle. You've got to block those down linemen, because otherwise they're going to get the backfield just like that and make plays. Clayton. 13 carries, 5 yards today. Last week, 12 carries, 8 yards. And that'll do some damage to the league's leading rusher who came an average of 112 per game. Flag thrown again. Everidge looking for Marrera. It is picked off. Fowler with the interception. Fowler still on his feet at the 25. Fowler looking for room. Brought down at the 28. And let's wait to see about the flag. He's wasted his energy, Bill, because it's going to come back because this is against Kansas in the neutral zone. Linebackers ran that stunt we showed earlier, run at the line of scrimmage, and they stepped in across the neutral zone. And the ball was snapped, so this is going to go against Kansas, going to negate this interception. Off 
five. Number 45 for the defense. Penalties five yards, and it's still second down. Payne, the culprit. There you see him. Jumped right in. Well, you saw Kane come up there in the last scrimmage, step in, and good pump. Well, this is what happens when you go for an interception. You know, you got to get a linebacker, get back there, you can go block. And this is Nick Reed going on. <laughs> Everett's that's what you call a pancake. Everett's grabbing on, too. Well, they sort it out. K-State avoids the turnover, and obviously that had a huge impact on it. Second down and seven. Ball on the 18, eight and a half minutes to go in this one. Everidge. Which way next? Floodman finally gets the tackle. You know, what's interesting, Bill, is that Kansas is just using a four-down lineman. There are three linebackers. They're just running the football. You see the guys here in the three linebackers. That's just seven. It's not eight and nine players up here, and they're running the down-the-line option, and it's just a pursuit. And when your quarterback them. average turns around and goes the opposite way, he's got no friends back there. He's got to stay with his buddies on the front side of the play. That's a mistake on the quarterback. Now, they have uh, Kansas... If they don't come back in this game, they're really going to wonder, how do we play that kind of defense and not come away with a W? I mean, they have just dominated K-State. 24 yards rushing, 116 passing, and it's been but through the air that they scored the touchdown. They throw here, and the figures got away from a man, 35. And he is brought down at the 38-yard line, Jerome Kemp. And the way this one has gone, just a key play or two can turn it around. 24 yards on the pickup. Well, I think Tlaib is going to miss a tackle here. You get the ball thrown outside. And you come back, and you got to make that tackle right there. And he misses his tackle. This is what allows the yards after the catch. And Yvonne yeah. figures fast enough to get away from some of the KU players and get some extra yards there after contact. First and 10, ball on the 38 for Kansas State. Maintain possession. Get that clock started to get on the snap. Everidge coming back to Figures. They got a miscommunication there. Well, actually, it was an illegal formation. I'm surprised the officials didn't call it because you had a tackle who was uncovered at the top of the screen. You take a look at that tackle right there. Then here's your receiver back off the line of scrimmage. That's an illegal formation. So not a penalty thrown. And just wondering what that guy's looking at. The state fortunate there. Not that they haven't seen the flag enough. 12 penalties for 94 yards against the Cats. And it's second down and 10 for KSU on their own 38. Everett does connect this time and figures they wrap him up. He's leaning for every yard. I believe that was the leave on the tackle. Yes. And the Wildcats keep it in bounds as well. Figures make it a play after the missed tackle a while ago. Now getting a chance to haul one in. I mean, the way this one is going, if Kansas State even can get a field goal, Gary, two scores seem almost impossible for, for KU at this point. Or for either club. <laughs> Well, from what we saw in the first half, we, we weren't expecting either of these teams to come out and just put up a lot of points in this half. Third and three, and it goes incomplete. Again, great pressure on the quarterback average as Keith was all over. Well, this is a mistake by the quarterback. He sets his backs, but both of them to his right. If you were to look at the play again, you'd see both of the personal protectors are back there to his right. assignment in the backfield and your quarterback needs to know hey I need somebody on here is rare he'll be punting from his 31 Gordon always a threat to his own 10 yard line for Kansas 642 Hunter as he was knocked to the ground Gordon receives it at the 22 yard line but it's coming back he was tackled by number two that was a fourth and three on the play and well, Rayer took some grief for his play last week against OU, not being out there on the punt on the punt team and the resulting safety. But now happy <laughs> that the K State fans are to have him out there and punch the ball, goes through his motion and gets knocked to the ground. And 
running into the kicker on number 12 of the defense. Penalty five yards, and the yardage is enough for a first down. Now that was the key. It was not the big penalty, but it was a fourth and three. Plus, this five makes all the difference in the world. Well, here steps through, kicks, and runs through. That's almost a roughing, but it's just a judgment call by the official back there. The referee's watching this. Ever so close. So K-State, four There's more downs to work yard with. Yard. And the clock at 6.34 now, and the ball at midfield. On the 50. Here's your penalty situation. Wow, 21 penalties in the game today. saying, wow, an opening. Something besides three linemen in my face. Well, they came in to the 43. Bill, they came in with different personnel. They came in with two tight ends, two backs, one wide receiver. See the tight ends here? Heavy formation. He just cuts to the gap right here. Good job of finding an opening, and then you got your hat on hat blocking everybody. And Clayton has a chance to break one there. Missed it almost the pitch away from that old shoestring tuck. Second down and four after the six-yard pickup by Thomas Clayton. Gets it again. Second effort. Nearly got him to the 40. He's going to be a little shy of the first down, though. Kane and Gordon make the tackle. Well, this is a big third down here for Kansas defensively. Going to be about third to about one or so to go. I think that, the, you know, with time running down here now, under six minutes in this ball game, that they've got to make a defensive stand here to get their offense back out there to have a chance to tie this ball game. This is a key play in this ball game for Kansas. Third down one, 41 yard line. Kansas. Sends in Mike Rivera, the linebacker spot. It'll be third and one for K-State at the 41. Oh, big hit by the Jayhawks. That was Banks Floodman, the senior out of Wichita. Out of a mention, all-conference pick as a sophomore. Last year, 47 tackles. Well, what do you do if you're Bill Snyder? It's fourth and one here. You send your punt team out there. Well, you got Rayer going out there, and that's a big play by Banks Floodman. Actually, they lost yardage on the play because of the tackle. Big, big hit there in the backfield, and talking about that being a key play for Kansas, they made it on that third down. Well, their defense has just been stopped today. They're, both teams defensively have really put a hurt on the other. It is now fourth and two, the ball at the 42, and Rayer stands on his own 44. Much pressure this time. High kick, trying to put it inside the 20, and Gordon was signaling fair catch. It is down inside the one-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Kansas will have to go 99-plus if they're going to tie this one up. Time out here. Hello and welcome to DirecTV. It's easy to switch to DirecTV service and the time to switch is now. I'm tired of it. My cable bill seems to keep going up. With DirecTV you get more for less. And if you call us right now we'll even send you a free DVD player just for subscribing. What's the picture going to be like? With DirecTV every channel is crystal clear with 100% digital quality. Call right now and get the total choice package and over 155 channels for just $39.99 a month for the first four months. Plus, you'll have access to exclusive programming like NFL Sunday Ticket. Great! Our number one goal is to keep you happy. One of our professional installers will be at your house in the morning. On a Saturday? Fantastic. Call right now and we'll give you everything you need to switch to DirecTV for free, including free equipment and next day installation for up to four rooms. Get the total choice package for just $39.99 a month. We'll even send you a free DVD player. For better picture, better service, and better value, switch to DirecTV today. Call now. Kansas State 10, Kansas 3, 428 remaining our Dr. Pepper game. Here's the fair catch by Gordon that he lets go. Yeah, he gets blocked into him, so he's off his tracks there, and then the ball goes down the field. And watch this play here by number 80. That's Brett Allstead. He gets the ball, pulls it back before it goes into the end zone. In college football, it's the position of the ball. It has nothing to do with the player, so it's a great job by Allstead. Sets up a huge situation here for the K-State defense. KU operating out of its own end zone, and Luke just pushes forward on a first down. KU with 424 counting to go, and the Jayhawks today, they are at 201 yards of total offense prior to that play. Just seven first downs. And you know, we've been talking about the KU defense. Well, K-State is 
certainly take care of its business, had not Well, you've got four minutes to go here. I think they need to pick up the pace because if they're just wanting to do little quarterback sneaks to get it out of their goal line area, they're not gonna they're not gonna have much time left on the clock. They need to pick up what they're doing. They need to have a sense of urgency. Second and nine. Play action. Incomplete. Intended for 83, Mark Simmons, a senior from DeSoto, Texas. Yeah, good play action fake there. The ball just sailed on, on loop that time, thrown it out of his end zone. Simmons last year's game, a win by KU. He had four receptions, including a touchdown grab against the Cats. Cats have won 11 in a row until last year. They're trying to get back on track here and go one and one in the Big 12 and make it four and one on the season. K-State heads to Lubbock and Texas Tech next week. That's where KU was last week. The Sooners are coming to Kansas City to meet Kansas at Arrowhead Stadium next Saturday. Third and nine, all on the two. Luke, in trouble, he's down. That's a safety. Kansas State has tacked on two more. Terry, Tierras George made the play. Well, it all set up by the punt team when the punt team recovered the football or stopped the progress of the football inside the one-yard line. It allowed the Kansas State defense to go ahead and tee off here. First down, Kansas was not able to get a lot of yardage. Second down, throw it out of bounds. And now you put your pass rush up there. You got Tiarius George on the top left side of the screen. He knocks, just gets enough of the quarterback, knocks him off balance, and he throws the ball out of the back of the end zone, and that's a safety. They're all applauding to George, and now Kansas will have to kick it off or punt from its own 20 to Kansas State with 3.39 remaining in the football game. And the Wildcats feeling pretty good about themselves right now. Well, it was an ugly first half. I'll tell you that, Bill. Kansas State was not operating very efficiently at all in the first half. In the third quarter, really wasn't great either, but they picked it up here in the fourth quarter, both defensively, offensively. You put together a 75-yard drive. You get ahead in this football game. And believe it or not, those two extra points on a safety are huge now because Kansas has to go out and not only get a touchdown, down, but they've got to get a second score with just under with three minutes and 39 seconds going in this ball game. That's not going to be an easy thing for Kansas. Now Kansas State coming in here today defensively only allowing 22 and a half points a game. Well, they have certainly met that challenge and they have shut down Kansas with the Jayhawks only scoring on a web field goal. They had a 3 0 lead at the half. And then K-State came back with Snodgrass to tie it up. And then they got a touchdown out of Nelson to take the lead. And that was safety. And in this series, they have been dominant when they've scored 20 or more, which is usually the case. First and 10 coming up. Let's see where they're getting. Morero fields it on the 10-yard line. Broke a tackle and then swarmed and hit near the 27-yard line with 3.32 remaining. Herrera lost his hat of the play, and that's where Kansas State will get the possession of the football following the safety. Yeah, somehow now Kansas has to go out there defensively and make a big play. You've got to cause a fumble. You've got to get an interception, something that's going to get the ball out of the hands of Kansas State because the clock is their enemy now. They've got two timeouts left in this ball game, three minutes and 32 seconds to go. You're going to need to use those timeouts to preserve as much time on the clock. Assuming that they run the ball here, you should call a timeout immediately. Yeah, I mean, KU's in a situation down nine. You're going to have to have two scores. So nearly an impossible situation. And also is the ball carrier here as they have that big backfield in there to kind of protect him a little bit. Reed and Flutman make the tackle. And elected not to use the nope. timeouts now. Well, maybe they can use it after second and third down, but you need to start preserving as much time on the clock. Looking down close to three minutes now. K State, two timeouts remaining. KU, two remaining. Second and ten on the 28 yard line. Everidge. Keeping the football, loss on the play, back to the 25-yard line. There's been a lot of negative plays here against this K-State offense, and 
here late in the ball game, you're trying to protect yourself and protect the football and keep that clock running. And really surprised you that Kansas is not electing to use their timeouts in this ball game here because precious seconds are being ticked off on this clock. And I'm sure that Allen Everidge at the line of scrimmage is going to let the play clock run all the way down before he snaps that ball. It's already at 10 seconds, and I'm sure it's going to get down to one or two before he snaps this thing. And assuming they hold him here, you're going to lose another good gap of time. Watch out, though, Everidge. He has stopped at the 33-yard line, and now they'll call a timeout. They're going to get the ball back. 2.04 remaining. They'll have one timeout remaining. Well, I, I, I'm of the opinion that you want to have the ball in your hands controlling the clock. You could have saved 25 seconds on that clock by holding it, having a timeout, and precious seconds are going to tick away. You know, when you're attempting to put points on the board here, you need two scores, so you need as much time to operate with as possible. And when, you have to, when you're on offense, you're able to save time. Yeah, you control the clock on offense. Later today, our college football quadruple header will roll on. Arizona getting ready for top-rated USC in a Pac-10 showdown as the Trojans try to stay unbeaten. Coverage begins after our game only on FSN. Stay with us here. Well, remember now, Kansas State had a punt block last week with, uh, at OU, and they've got to shore that up there. They've had some issues with special teams. Hasn't been the you know the most productive thing for, for Bill Snyder and his football team this year. So you want to protect the punter first in this situation. Rare chance to get out there and punt this ball again. And then you've got Charles Gordon on the other side for Kansas, who can perhaps take one back to the house. We've seen his ability to run with after the catch. And I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't have a little trickery here. Something with Gordon. He threw it once in his ball game, maybe a throwback or something like that to make a big play in the kick return game. They're going to get good field position, but the clock is the enemy right now with needing two scores. Fourth and fourth of 33. Rayer stands inside his own 20. Good snap. No pressure on the kicker as they set for a return. Gordon will have a shot. Got a block 30. 35 40. Gordon sheds a tackler, brings it to the 47 yard line where Kansas will get possession at 153 to work with here. Remember, they got to get two scores. You're at a point now, you got to score quickly and then onside. Yeah, they've got to put points on the board in a hurry, so who's going to be out there at the helm? It looks like Luke, the senior quarterback, is going to get the opportunity here. Getting the 53 seconds to go on the clock here, and you've got to do something pretty quick because you got to put points up there. Doesn't matter if you get a field goal, you're going to have to get a second possession somehow to put a touchdown up. First and 10 of the 47 of Kansas for the Jayhawks. Down 12-3. Luke. In trouble. Rounds a football. Threw it away. Well, you know, kind of what you like to see sometimes is you like to see a defensive tackle become a defensive back. And that's exactly what Alfonso Moran did, number 50 for K-State this time. He's actually lined up on the, on the line of scrimmage, and he's Second taking away the screen down. pass, which is what Kansas wanted to run there, a quick little screen. But Moran, he was all there, right there in front of the, the running back and didn't allow anything to happen. You saw what kind of day that Luke has had. That one reception was for 50 yards. But together, the three quarterbacks are 5 of 18 for 91 yards for Kansas today. Second and 10, the ball on the 47. Well, the biggest play was Charles Gordon throwing the ball. Yeah. Complete. Not close enough for a first down. And clock will move at the 47-yard line of Kansas State. 35 and ticket. Watts made the tackle. Third and four at the 47. Luke got hit as he threw it. He completes it at the 26 yard line and out of bounds. On the play, Derek Vine, the tight end. Well, I don't know how he even gets his ball off because he's got a defensive tackle right in his mouth as he throws his football and throws it to the outside and does a good job for Vine to get it out of bounds. Look at this move right here. Bingo, right there at his chest. Throws the ball out there real well. That's Quentin Eccles putting the pressure on the quarterback. 22 yards on the play. It's at the 25. Remember, they need two scores here. Down 12-3. Ten at the 25. Looking for Gordon. Incomplete. Covering on the play. Number 17, Porter. 
Yeah. George was back in the face of Luke again. Yeah, had a blitz that time. You have Brandon Archer coming inside, putting pressure on the quarterback. Ryan Luke standing back there, and this isn't fun sometimes, folks. That's George laying a pretty good lick on him. Here's George, got the safety, and put K-State in such an enviable position. Second and 10, 112 remaining. Kansas, one timeout remaining. Fine goes in motion behind Luke. Luke, going to keep the football. He's in trouble. And he is brought down at the 24-yard line. Brandon Archer is there. Well, they use their final timeout, Bill. Boy, a KU situation with 101 to go. Do you kick a field goal if you can hit the, what do we got here, from the 24-41 yarder? You still got to have another possession. You at least, if you do that, you do put, if you make it, you put pressure on that kickoff to Kansas State knowing. Well, I think you make that decision on fourth down, not yeah. on third down. You still got one more opportunity. Yeah, you can make that decision on fourth down if it's a... Uh, you need to put points up there somehow, some way. It's harder to score a touchdown, obviously. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, I don't think a field goal at this point in this situation is a gimme either. So, yeah. Maybe uh, you, know, you think, well, here, we got two downs for a first down. You know, but you really need to be, be pre preserving time on the clock. So if you're offensive minded, you're going to try to do something to the outside of the field. Don't throw the ball in the middle of the field because that's just going to chew up time. And if you're short of the first down, you're going to be your offense is going to be out of sync, out of rhythm, and you may falter even getting a first down and continue this drive. Third down and nine, and you see what that's been like for them today. Three of 13 for Kansas. Fine again. Goes in motion behind Luke. Luke takes it. The block, give him some time, unloads, and he completes it. Let's see where they mark it. He needed to get to the 15. Gordon, the receiver, Baldwin covering. It's not a first down, so the clock doesn't stop. They're continuing to use the clock, and they have to line up on fourth down here and get this first down. There's no timeouts left for Kansas, so they got to call a play that works. I don't know why the clock is stopped. the officials and they're going to review there's going to be a video review here well they may be reviewing the spot of the ball if it is close enough for a first down that's what the officials may be looking at here I don't think they're disputing you know the catch take a look at Luke as he throws the ball and that's Charles Gordon. Charles Gordon catching the ball, and it's right here on that line. It's, you know, I don't know if that's a good angle to see exactly where he was with the possession of the football. Almost need to have that's a good block there on the outside to give him a chance to throw that ball. Charles Gordon's body is right on the 15-yard line, so the ball is positioned just shy of it, and a first down would be just at or just beyond the 15-yard line. 41 seconds to go. This... It's a break for Kansas, though. It is. So you've got to make up your mind right now to know exactly what you're going to do so when they put the ball back in play, and it's going to be either or for Mark Mancini. Well, what you do is you've got two plays you need to call. If you get a first down because it's respotted and they're going to spot the ball, you need to have a play that goes for a touchdown. If not, you're going to go for a first down opportunity here. And I think it's what they're lining up right now trying to get it. They're thinking it's fourth down. Well, they're ready, but the rest <laughs> both teams has called on the field. Please reset the clock to 45 seconds. Four five. This is a huge break for Kansas, and it'll be fourth down. Fourth down. And now a timeout, Kansas State. Yeah, Bill Snyder ran out there and. Yelled at an official to call a timeout. He wants to get his group. And at this point, he might as well. Yeah, nothing wrong with Kansas that. Kansas was ready to go. And he wants to make sure that, hey, this is an opportunity to wrap the game up. Yeah, but the clock would have wound. The referee would have wound the clock to start it because it was a catch inbounds. And 
They just stopped the clock to review the play, so they would have wound the clock when they made it ready. I don't know that that's the factor of thinking that Bill Schneider doesn't really matter there, but uh, 45 seconds here. This is a obviously it's it for, for Kansas. They've got to get a first down here or build. This is an opportunity where you know if you don't like the your chances on fourth down or getting that first down, kick the field goal. Yeah. You know, this, you know, you got to score. score twice. Yeah. And, and, yeah, it's much more difficult if you do get the ball back in the onside kick. Now you, everybody knows you got to get a touchdown. But just the same is you stay alive. I, and that's, I guess, my thinking is that if you can connect here, it's a 32-yarder now, you got a chance to... Well, let's assume they run the football to get a first down. Well, if they get a running, if they get a first down, the clock in college football stops while they reset the chain so your offense could get up there and, and go again. So I really think that Kansas has to have two offensive plays already called and ready to go for this play and the succeeding play. All right, we'll see what they come up with. Fourth and one, the ball on the 15, 45 seconds to go. K-State leading it by nine. Kansas with the ball with Luke. Hands it off to the fullback. I don't think he got it. Not even close. Nick Anderson was stopped, and Kansas State takes over on down. How big was number 92, Terry is George, on that drive for Kansas State? What he's done, done a great job, got the sack, and the Kansas State defense, hey, there are two retired defensive players of the game, and Terry is George, one of the big reasons for that, and especially on that last play. Kansas State. The Wildcats come up big when they need it. It wasn't pretty, but only a couple of monumental mistakes will keep them from locking this one up in the wind column. And they have a little celebration on their sideline after a hard fun game. And that governor's come, coming back to Manhattan. Bill Snyder said he didn't like walking down his hallway and seeing an empty spot in that trophy case that had been filled by the governor's cup for 11 years in a row. Now the old bragging rights are going to shift across the state again. Quarterback Everett takes the knee, and Kansas out of timeouts, and Kansas State putting the wraps on a 12-3 game. It is a beautiful sight to Bill Snyder and his Wildcats. Now, I don't think they're even going to snap the ball here. It looks like the play clock and the uh, game clock are in sync where Kansas State's not going to have to snap this football. And Bill, I didn't think there's any way to start this ball game with all the mistakes that they had, that they were going to come on and win this thing. But somehow, some way, after halftime, Kansas State outplayed the Jayhawks. It was a defensive battle, to say the least, and the Jayhawks fall to the Wildcats here today. For Gary Reasons, John Raddick, and our entire crew, this is Bill Lance saying so long from the little apple of Manhattan, Kansas. Stay tuned. The guys in the studio are standing by to get you set for the USC game. Live from Studio C in Industry City, Davis, Davis. Our first guest needs a little introduction, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome George Hamilton. <laughs> How are you, sir? Please have a seat. Thanks for coming. Thank you. You know, I got to tell you, that TV in the green room is spectacular. <laughs> that is no TV, George. That is the award-winning Dell 42-inch HD plasma TV. <laughs> and we noticed you noticing. Freddie, show the green room cam footage. The green room cam? Oh, yeah, we're sneaky devils here. Look at you. Those features. That true-to-life color. You're stunning. Yeah, the Dell plasma TV. An amazing picture at an amazing price. Oh, oh the TV. <laughs> the TV's great, too. Spectacular. Spectacular, George. It's a Dell! Davis, right now, save $400 on a Dell 42-inch HD Plasma TV. Plus, get free shipping. Get the most out of your home entertainment with a Dell Media Center PC starting at only $6.99. It's entertainment made easy with Dell and Microsoft. Finally, affordable LASIK. Imagine life with reduced dependence on glasses and contact lenses. It's possible with the LASIK Vision Institute. Our centers offer some of the latest FDA-approved lasers and diagnostic technology, including custom technology to improve your vision. All of this at an unbeatable price. Our independent surgeons have performed over 500,000 procedures. Call now for a free information session with a LASIK counselor. Our LASIK procedures are as low as $2.99 per eye. 
Plus, if you call right now, you can receive interest-free financing. That's right, 0% financing for up to one year. LASIK from $299 per eye plus 0% financing. Call 1-800-620-7560 now to act on this incredible offer. That number again is 1-800-620-7560. 1-800-620-7560. The LASIK Vision Institute. Experience, commitment, technology, and affordability. October 16th on FSN. The 10 year anniversary, all season long on FSN. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our college football Saturday studios. It is a final in Manhattan, Kansas, as I am joined by, of course, the Hall of Famer, Billy Ray Smith, the national and Super Bowl champion, DeMarco Farr. Uh, yeah, and not one you're going to send, not one you're going to send in to say, wow, this is a Hall of Fame game, but you know how it goes in college football. A win is a win, and you'll take it, especially after being embarrassed by Oklahoma. Yeah, a win is a win, is a win, is a win. But this is a game that featured 21 penalties, 14 punts, and five different quarterbacks between Ooh, yeah. two teams. My, my player of the game, Maurice Porter, the punter. He showed up for K-State really? and actually punted the football. <laughs> <laughs> I think when you look at the game and, and you see these, these two programs, until you decide on a quarterback, make him your guy, where, where the other 10 guys in the huddle knows they can get in there, they can count on this guy to lead the team, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. And it's surprising to me that Bill Snyder hasn't seen that. Uh, Mark Mangino hasn't seen that. This is really a, a, a very, very dangerous place for them to be without a real leader in that offensive huddle. Another little bitty battle going on in the Big 12. This one from Dallas, Texas. It is the Red River rivalry. Number two, Texas, has lost to Oklahoma on five consecutive occasions. But it certainly does not look like that losing streak will stretch to six, greatly because of this man. Vince Young, little Vince Sanity to the sophomore Billy Pittman. He takes it to the house. 24 to six, just underway in the third quarter. I'll tell you what, BR, this is exactly how this game should be, given the plight of Oklahoma right now, given the expectations of Texas. Well, that's, that, that's not what all the Sooner fans thought. I, I think Vince Young coming out taking control early was really the key to this game for the Texas offense. Definitely, Vince Young is not the leading rusher. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know what? Jamal Charles is in this game. What Adrian Peterson was for Oklahoma one season ago, and right now Texas taking care of business. So we get ready to feature number one USC here on none other than FSN. We'll get into these comparisons of number two and number one, but USC needs to continue to play good football. There's no question about that. In the last couple of weeks, they have gotten into, DeMarco, some serious first-half deficits. Yeah, definitely. We're talking about the their second-half football team. Well, what's happening in the first half? Teams are coming out, and they're giving a USC everything they've got in the first half, but they're just running out of gas. USC just keeps plugging right along. In the fourth quarter, they're there to win the football games. Yeah, they just sap you of all your strength, all your emotion, and then in the second half, they pour it on, and I'm telling you, it's going to catch up to SC, and it might be in South Bend next week. they got to come out and beat their guys up on defense. And depth is obviously, as we talked about on the kickoff show, a great thing. Getting closer and closer to the kickoff of number one USC. Stay with us on FSN. Some finer points of the all-new Hyundai Sonata. It has more interior space than Camry or Accord, plus standard electronic stability control and six standard airbags. With quality backed by America's best warranty. All for $4,500 less than Accord. The all-new fuel-efficient Hyundai Sonata. Nicely equipped at 17495 It's a Hyundai like you've never seen before. Get an all-new Sonata with an extra $1,000 bonus cash when you finance through HMFC. Finally, affordable LASIK. Imagine life with reduced dependence on glasses and contact lenses. It's possible with the LASIK Vision Institute. Our centers offer some of the latest FDA-approved lasers and diagnostic technology, including custom technology to improve your vision. All of this at an unbeatable price. Our independent surgeons have performed over 500,000 procedures. Call now for a free information session with a LASIK counselor. Our LASIK procedures are as low as $2.99 per eye. 
Plus, if you call right now, you can receive interest-free financing. That's right, 0% financing for up to one year. LASIK from $299 per eye plus 0% financing. Call 1-800-620-7560 now to act on this incredible offer. That number again is 1-800-620-7560. 1-800-620-7560. The LASIK Vision Institute. Experience, commitment, technology, and affordability. I'm thinking of a number between 450 and 850. Do you know what it is? It's my credit score, and it happens to be 720. When I apply for credit, that's the number lenders look at. The higher my credit score, the better chance I have of saving a lot of money. And a new car, a refi, insurance, or even credit cards. It's as simple as that. I'll tell you what else is simple. Staying on top of my credit score and my credit report at FreeCreditReport.com. I just log on to FreeCreditReport.com and within seconds I can see my credit score and I check to make sure the information in my credit report is accurate. So I get the credit I deserve. Do you know your credit score? Do you know what's in your credit report? You can find out right now at FreeCreditReport.com. You can even print it out if you want to. How much easier could it get? Log on to FreeCreditReport.com. Get the most out of your credit and get the most out of your life at FreeCreditReport.com. That's FreeCreditReport.com. If you missed the game, be sure to tune in to This Week in Mizzou Football. Every week, Coach Panko gives his in-depth game recap, player of the game picks, and other behind-the-scenes Missouri football action. Catch This Week in Mizzou Football, Sunday nights at 10.30 on FSN Midwest. You're watching FSN Midwest, where Rams fans come first. The number one team in the nation, the Trojans of USC, winners of the past two national championships, featured in just moments here on FSN. Mike Goldberg, DeMarco Farr, Billy Ray Smith, back inside our college football studios in Los Angeles. And, and guys, when you look at number one USC, it seems like all they have to do, DeMarco, is flip the switch. But sooner or later, and we've talked about it before, sooner or later, that switch is going to catch up to them. They need to come out disciplined and win this football game real quick. Well, eventually, they're going to have to catch up and, and get going in the first halves. Right now, it's not really hurting them all that much. They're coming back and doing it. They're a great second-half team. But what you're seeing right now is people coming out, and they're trying to rattle Matt Leiner. That seems to be the game plan. Go in there, knock him down, and see if you can take him off his game. But if you take Leiner out, you still got to deal with Lindell White, Reggie right. Bush, almost 400 yards of rushing offense and four scores. Right. It's just all around, man. <laughs> against you, uh, ASU, you saw them dealing with Matt Leiner, trying to check him out of the game, taking a, a questionable hit that I will tell you was a cheap shot, in my opinion, uh, in, the, in that game. Put him on the sideline for a few plays, and uh, you got to see a little bit of the, the backup quarterback, John David Booty. But let me tell you, this is going to go on, because Matt Leiner is the key to that, that offensive machine rolling. Matt Leinert, I thought, was really cool. He didn't say too much about it. He just right. said, hey, it's going to happen. I'm a targeted man. I'm going to keep him with my targets, all those great wide receivers, see if we can continue to win football games. We'll see you back in the half right now. Enjoy half number one of number one USC on FSN. Chevy promises to keep building. Most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. I promise to deliver nine models that start under 20 grand. I promise fuel economy is just as important to Chevy as it is to you. Chevy, the number one selling cars, trucks, and SUVs in America. I promise that we've lowered prices, added features, or redesigned 19 models. I promise to remind you why you got your license in the first place. That's a Chevy total value promise. See your Kansas City area Chevy dealer. Official vehicles of the Kansas City Chiefs. The Ultimate Fantasy Football Show. Our experts will tell you everything you need to know to build a fantasy powerhouse. Thursday on FSN. Sarah football Saturday we are at the Memorial Coliseum here in Los Angeles and here come the USC Trojans <laughs> tell you what the Trojans are so quick Pete the song girls are running a 4-4 <laughs> I mean that's true. 
that's a sign of a good team. That's not true. You know, oftentimes you, you can look into the eyes of, of an opponent when they're playing on a visiting field and, and uh, really kind of tell if they're ready to play, if they have it in them, if they're hungry. That's where the third member of our broadcast team has been, Jimmy Watson. Jimmy, you've been looking into the eyes of the Arizona Wildcats. Are they looking back? You know, I think they, they're a little apprehensive, Barry. They're not sure what quite to expect. But, you know, there's a precedent for this game. Let me take it back 24 years ago. 1981, here at the Coliseum, Essie was the big dog on the college football landscape. Undefeated, number one in the nation. Marcus Allen, a future Heisman Trophy winner in their backfield, taking on the Mildcats of Arizona, who were 2-2. Two two. True to form, Essie led 10-0 after eight minutes. But after that, Arizona settled down and behind terrific Tom Tunnicliffe, the quarterback. He threw for 293 yards, a touchdown to Vance Johnson. A couple of late SC turnovers, and Arizona upsets USC 13 to 10. The head coach of Arizona that day, interesting to SC fans, it was Larry Smith, who of course ended up coaching SC a couple of years later. I'll give you a historical footnote. That game probably won't have much effect on these current USC players when that game was played October 10th, 1981. None of the current Trojans had even been born yet. Barry, I remember that game. Does that mean I'm getting old? <laughs> yeah, me too. I was four or five, I think, as I recall. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Stoops, of course, uh, who was born, but not by a whole lot. Uh, the head coach now at Arizona. And, you know, we've talked about this, P, uh, off the air. This is a guy you can't help but think he is going to get it done. He is trying hard to change the face of this program. Just little things have prevented them from winning. They almost had Purdue. They really had Utah on the road. They got a win over Northern Arizona, and they got a beat, beat up pretty bad last week against Cal. Mike Stoops is a guy that has this team on the right track. They just can't get over the hump and get a big win. Just not yet. Yeah, he said he, that they thought uh, he thought that his team took a step back last week, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. So they're going to be watching the quarterback, Richard Kovalchek, very closely today. SC won the toss. They declined. They'll take the ball in the second half. Short kick this time. Running up and taking the step toe at the 15-yard line. He's got a little gap. Step toe at the 35. Tries to step outside and is corralled and finally down by the kicker, Troy Van Larkham, at the 40-yard line, a 26-yard return off a short kick, so good field position to start. Let's take a look at the offense for the Arizona Wildcats. We talked about the Kovalchuk, the quarterback. We'll talk a little bit more about him. Just a sophomore took a step back last week. Mike Belt, outstanding running back, but again, with the rest of his team, a little bit inconsistent this year. They will have to look to run the ball today. I don't think there's any question about that. The offensive line, Adam Hawes, is young, but according to the coaching staff, he will be a player. Bell with Harris at the fullback spot. And this is Bell. And nothing to it. Coming up to fill the gap as he has. Oscar Lua. Defensively for the U.S. Trojans. Yeah, they're a little banged up. And no, they don't drop off hardly at all. Philly Moala will get the start ahead of Lawan Ramsey. Ramsey's in uniform. We don't think we will see him today, though. Williams, of course, stepped in when Dallas Sartz got hurt. Oscar Lewis played absolutely brilliantly. The secondary, it's been John Walker who stepped in when Terrell Thomas went down. So even though there's backups, they don't drop off a whole lot. Give this time is to Bell, and he doesn't get much. About a yard, Frosty Rucker, first man to him, and help from Oscar Lewis. And those are guys that have led this defense. Frosty Rucker and Oscar Lewis stepping in and blowing up Mike Bell on the zone play. Arizona right now trying to take the air out of the football like everybody does. It seems like we say that every time somebody comes into the Coliseum to take on USC. They don't want that offense out on the field. They want to slow things down. They don't want long yardage situations. They got one right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's what they don't want to do. They said we can't play behind the chains. And right now that's what Arizona is doing. Look at the third down and eight. Kovalchuk to throw, step toe, can't hang on. Had it in his hands and dropped it. Might have heard a couple of footsteps from Ryan Team. And that's unfortunate for the Wildcats because that was a first down. Cindric step toe has been a playmaker, and they just need one of these wide receivers, guys to catch balls. They need him to break a tackle and get downfield. They need step toe to make a play there catch the ball and get a couple yards to get the first down but now arizona's got a punt unfortunate that's the kind of things that have happened to arizona all season long little tiny things that have kept them from getting over that hump of course now the object is trying to keep it out of the hands of reggie bush that's easier said than done danny bauer is the punter high snap and bauer drives it pretty good and it's going to be down <laughs> At the two-yard line, Bush decided to let it go, hoped that it would hop into the end zone. It did not. 
So Arizona gets a little break there, and it's Michael Johnson who downs the ball at the two-yard line. 56-yard punt. More importantly, no return. And the Trojans will take the field offensively with Matt Leiter at quarterback. He got a little dinged last week in the game against Arizona State. He had a concussion. Not announced, oddly enough, until Wednesday of this week. Reggie Bush, the do-everything running back. When it's not him, it'll be Lendale White. David Kurtman has come up big in the last few games. And the offensive line, not only are they supremely talented, they are also very good. Well. The real scare card. How do you stop the USC Trojans? Historically, they have thrown first and run later. We'll see what they do today. They will throw it right out of the end zone. Looking for it all. And Smith has it at the 37-yard line. Perfect ball by Leonard. Underthrew it a little bit, but I think that's by cause. Antoine Quezon defending, but Smith right there. And that was very difficult for Antoine Quezon. Here's a corner that is always right on his man. Steve Smith pushes off a little bit. Quezon gets a hold of that face mask. Very tough to defend a ball that's underthrown against a receiver that can adjust very well, a guy like Steve Smith. 34 yards on the first snap. So, so far, everything that uh, Wildcats worried about has taken place. With the exception of a good punt down to the two-yard line. The Trojans now at the 38 on one snap. Here's Reggie Bush. Bush is stopped nicely that time by Sean Jones with the penetration off his linebacker spot. Defensively for the Arizona Wildcats, and he said their front seven has struggled a bit, and the two defensive ends are the guys who really are on the spot today. Got to get a little pressure. Copeland Bryant, a good game last week against Cal. Linebackers, they are thin at the linebacking position. Krogstad really an outside backer, but because of injuries, having to play in the middle. And there's the strength, the secondary, about which we spoke earlier. Four wideouts to one side. Now Leinert tried to throw to Bush, and Bush is claiming he was held, and he might have a pretty good argument. Antoine Quezon was all entwined with Reggie Bush. Well, I think that was a great play by Quezon, and I like what Arizona's doing early in the game, getting their best corner on Reggie Bush when he gets split out. Quezon was ready for the quick hitch, jumped that, and if Leonard had thrown it, it would have been an interception back to the house. Reggie Bush tried to improvise and get by him and get him on a uh, little go route, and no one was having it for Arizona. Nice players by Arizona defensively. Patrick Turner, the talented freshman in the lineup early for USC. He, too, had been kind of missing in action. A lot of talk here in Southern California of where is he? Well, here he is in motion. And he gave us to Bush again. Bush bounces outside. Look out on the 45. First down, just short of midfield. Will Ray Fontenot runs him out. This is the frustrating thing, Mary, about defending Reggie Bush. Here he comes, very simple zone play. The tackle should be made right there, but Reggie Bush too good going sideways and is able to get down the field and get a first down. You can't miss tackles against USC because that guy, he makes you miss, and then he makes you pay for it once he gets up the field. So just short of midfield, Trojans with their second first down. Lendale White, the ball game for the first time for USC. They fake, line up with throw off the boot right, got a man wide open, it's Turner. Turner gets it at the 35 and is down at about the 31-yard line. James Fox then cracked him, but another big gainer for the USC Trojans, 20 yards on that one. Now a lot of people have been concerned about USC's fullbacks. Everybody just left, but no left Turner alone, he's standing there by himself. Everybody's up on Hancock, the fullback, he's wide open. And that's another first down. USC throwing on first down and running zone on third and ten. Really mixing it up in this first track. And already they got the Wildcats back on their heels. Not the start, needless to say, that Arizona would have liked. Wendell White remains at the tailback spot. Lineup going to go up again. Pump fake, looking for it all. Now he throws underneath two calls for the tight end. Dominique Bird. And Bob Payson defending and doing a good job once again. This Arizona secondary is a lockdown secondary, and they will hit you hard once you catch the ball. Not just the safety, but the corners, especially Quezon, really fine tacklers and hard hitters. Problem is, if Leonard has that much time to throw, these guys are going to get tired, and people are going to start coming open. Nobody's more patient. Nobody's more fluid with an offense than Matt Leonard in the Pac-10. Three wide outs now and a single setback, Lindale White on second down and 10. And Leonard checking off. 
Leonard straight back. He's got Smith wide open. And held the ball a little bit long, but Smith still came up with a great catch that time. And this here is just showing the maturity of Matt Leiter. Comes up to the line, calm and cool, changes the play, wants to go downfield, sees his man Smith come open, and you see Brooks how physical he is, giving up his body, putting himself at risk, almost making that play. But Steve Smith is sure-handed, and what a fine throw by Matt Leiter. This USC offense looks good, but we got a flag on the field. That's going to come back. Two men in motion, never were set for the second. Five yards. Previous spot, second down. That was off that audible. One thing USC has been plagued with, especially in the first half of games, is penalties, both against Oregon and against ASU. Yeah, and I think that was Brandon Hancock moving around on that one along with a wide receiver. The problem for USC has been penalties in the first half, and you have to say that's where they miss Norm Chow. They have two young coordinators. The offense in the first half of football games has not been disciplined. Reggie Bush back in the ball game, and here is Reggie Bush. Bounces it inside this time. Takes a couple people with him down to the 30-yard line. Bush. Reggie Bush is a lot stronger runner than a lot of people give him credit for. He's not nearly the size of Reggie White. He carried a couple people with him for a few yards. Yeah, this is a very simple ISO play. Reggie Bush just coming right up the gut there, and you're going to see him make a guy miss, and then he, he runs through a couple yards. arms. Only 200 pounds of Kronstadt ends up getting him. 200 pounds, but... 200 pounds of solid muscle. When you run him inside like that, he gets a little shaken up, and he's headed to the bench. Yeah, you can see it came off a little hitch in his giddy-up. Wendell White back into the lineup. Third down and 10. Minard straight back. Throws, and it's caught underneath the short of the first down by Jarrett. Reggie Bush might have rolled an ankle on that last play. Let's take another look at him. See what he sees. Well, he's fighting for extra yardage. You see Layman Meads come in there, almost a spear right on the side, and then the ankle you see just come up under Reggie Bush. That has a tendency to happen. He might be wearing ankle braces. You know he's taped for sure. Hopefully he didn't tear any ligaments there. They got him on the table. They're going to take a long look at Reggie Bush. It did not appear to be real serious. They're going to go here on fourth down, and this is a Pete Carroll specialty. Fourth down and seven. Leinert straight back. They bring the blitz. It's picked up. Leinert throws. Caught. Great grab. Jarrett with a brilliant grab. And it'll be enough for a first down. Glendale White picked up the blitzer that time. I remember Mike Stewart telling us yesterday, you got to take your chances and just have to kind of pick your spots because they'll kill you when you blitz. Well, there you are. The word he used was desperate. You cannot get desperate. But how frustrating for Mike Stoops and his defense stopping USC in a very good drive, and they get it on fourth down, going to a tall receiver and picking up a blitz with a very good tailback. Dale yeah, White continues in the ball game for Bush now. This time a little underneath throw that time intended for Smith. It was going to be a of screen, but miscommunication perhaps between Liner and Smith. Looks like Matt Liner changed his mind right in the middle of throwing that ball. Stopped his arm, but the ball kept going. Incomplete pass for the Trojans. Second and 10. Second down and 10. The ball at the 18-yard line. First offensive possession for USC. Arizona went three and out after receiving the kick. As you can see, USC using up a lot of the clock. Jarrett comes in motion. Cuts it back, cuts a gap at the 10, at the 5, first down at the 2 yard line. Layman Means on the tackle, but again, Lindale White, and he is a load. He is a load. This is just a very simple zone play. Lindale White knows when to keep it on the front side, and he knows when to cut it back. He's going to take that one all the way back, and is just able to make a little dead leg cut to elude that tackler, almost scores with it. He followed that line that you drew. Very well. Yeah, that's good. that zone line. It's always a looping line with the zone run, man. <laughs> Two tight ends this time. I'm an artist with that. Power I did great job. Absolutely. <laughs> rolls. Going to take it himself. Will no sign. Going to say he's short. Good yeah, pretty good to me to take the truth. It did. He may have been out of bounds from our angle. You know, he is in that ballroom dancing class, Barry. That's the only class he has to graduate. You see Leonard, we've seen him running around a lot this year. Tiptoes, and he may have been in. 
I'm not sure if that ball was on the pylon side. Rodgers on the replay. They agree with you and I. It probably should have been a touchdown. I think it was. As it is at the one yard line. Second out. And Dale White walks in. Touchdown, throws. Touchdown, USA. Oh, that's a clinic. That was a little too easy for the Trojans on that one. But don't be fooled. Arizona had a stunt on to stop up those A gaps right between the center and the guard. USC had the right play called. Lindale White walked in, but we still have not seen Reggie Bush in this football game. Got to find out what happened to him. But I think they're in pretty good shape with Lindale White at the tailback position as well. 13 plays, 96 yards. Took four minutes and 16 seconds, culminated by the one-yard touchdown by White. Drive for point is up and good, and it is a 7-0 ball game just like that. We'll jump away with nine minutes, 12 seconds remain to be played in the first quarter. The Trojans just doing what they do. Touchdown on their first drive, 7 to nothing. We're coming back. There are some places guys shouldn't go. Then there's Sport Clips, made just for guys, with sports on TV and stuff guys like, and none of the stuff guys don't. At Sport Clips, guys win. The beauty of the suit is that the bottoms match the top. Same offense, you say that won't work in the SEC. What has happened at Army? They have um, doubled their wins from a year ago. They had a miserable season in 03. They didn't win a game. That was 0 and 13. That was the worst record in school history. And uh, the last really good year they had was in 1996. And Bobby trying to get them back to those glory years when they won three. Peterson with a sprained ankle suffered against Kansas. You waited, you dreamed, and now. has been brought to you by your local Pontiac dealers. Go in today and check out the all-new Pontiac showroom. Pontiac, designed for action. 96-yard drive on the Trojans' first possession, culminated by Rondell White. Reggie Bush dinged up a little bit. We'll keep an eye on him. I'm sure Waddy is on the case. Dr. Watson, step toe on the return. Comes out from one yard deep. Again, he's got a little room at the 20, at the 30. We all get a replica on Marty Cooper. How does the vindication feel? Going out of the league to the Super Bowl championship. Just unbelievable right now. The feeling is overwhelming that we just came in here. We did it. We had a focus and we had a goal and we we're going to get it done tonight. Not focus. Your team, Tampa Bay, seemed to be on an emotional high for three minutes of the football game that Oakland could not match. Now, we were going to come out because they tempo, that was their whole team. They tempo, they tempo. We got their coaches from it. We always like to play fast and hard on them. So it wasn't nothing but a challenge for us, and we matched that challenge. I was a busy man, so no. He's going to be on the debut program for Jimmy Kimmel. Now, we look forward to seeing you there, brother. Definitely going to have a good time, because the whole world going to know about these real champions. Uh, yeah. well, not paper champions. Not paper. No paper. We got help. We got help. We Well, John, we couldn't pick any one guy for the horse fit. We're putting them, I mean, this is like Jackson Pollock just throwing paint up against the wall. With, our guys are rushing in and rushing out and finding all these pictures, and we're going to put them all up. 
Well, and I and I think that's right because you know they come in they were the the number one defense in the league and we talked about you know does defense beat number one offense and number one defense came out there and they beat number one offense and and really for the most part of this game they controlled the game. Yeah, Dwight Smith two interceptions two touchdowns Dexter Jackson two interceptions and coming up next will be the Cadillac post game show featuring the Lombardi and MVP trophy presentations and a live performance from Bon Jovi after this from our ABC stations. Because children are the future. Have you given any thought to what you're going to be when you graduate besides 28 years old? <laughs> Parents must teach them today. We're homeschooling you from now on. Whatever we don't know, you don't know. When did the Korean War start? I don't know, and neither do you. My wife and kids and George Lopez. ABC Wednesdays. Bring the kids. Lisa Marie Presley. Diane Sawyer. A primetime exclusive television event. Coming to ABC. Electric energy. We're the people who make it. We're the people who support it. We're the people who move it. We're the people who deliver it. And we're doing it all for one person, you. We're the people of West Star Energy, doing what it takes to keep the lights on night and day. Daytona is just around the corner, and your Dodge dealer is gearing up with Dodge Power Days, where you can nail down a cash allowance of up to $3,000, or 0% APR financing on the hard-charging Dodge SXT. Save on the race-inspired Intrepid. Save on the restyled Stratus and the sporty Neon. Plus, get Dodge's seven-year or 70,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. You want to add some snap to your ride? Step on the gas. Power Days ends February 28th. Community involvement. That's a term you hear so much, you may think it's just words. Not something real. But believe me, it's real. Just ask my kids. My wife. My students. They'll tell you. When I was laid off, I found out just how real it is. I'm not sure words can express how much we appreciate companies like Preferred Health Systems. That support so many community causes that really make a difference. Thanks, Preferred Health Systems. You obviously haven't forgotten. People are real. Kansas Connections playing on Super Sunday tonight at 10 on Cake News. Welcome back to ABC Sports exclusive coverage of Super Bowl 37 and the Cadillac Post Game Show. <laughs> I'm Chris Berman, and coming up, player interviews, the Lombardi Trophy presentation, and Super Bowl 37 MVP award presented by Cadillac. But Buccaneers, it's your life. These guys kicked off the NFL season in Times Square. Now here they are again, Bon Jovi. Ladies and gentlemen, Bon Jovi. hold that trophy and uh, to be number one in this league is uh, an unbelievable accomplishment coming out as a winner you know being a, the best uh, amongst your peers for one year a memory you can never forget the Vince Lombardi trophy <laughs> 
that always puts a signature on you being a great player. Yeah, that's something no one can ever take away from you and your teammates is that feeling of being called a champion. It's unimaginable right like, now for a little small country boy. It's time for the presentation of the Vince Lombardi Trophy to the Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Owner Malcolm Glazier, Coach John Gruden will come over. At this time, the Commissioner of the National Football League, Mr. Paul Tagliabue. Malcolm, for you, for your entire family, your whole organization, your players, and especially...